take it away. Hi. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm Bruno, and I'm a software engineer at Google. I work with uh, data flow templates. I think it was templates was covered uh, here today by a few talks. I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to see it. Yeah, Pranav couldn't come, but uh, he's part of my team, and I think I can talk about his work uh, as well. So the topic is benchmarking beam pipelines on Dataflow. I think we have seen a few talks about uh, how to optimize pipelines, uh, what kind of worker type, or how much, how many vCPUs or how much RAM you want in your workers. And we have created a framework uh, which is a way of actually testing the, those uh, settings, so you can validate uh, many different scenarios and see how it performs on Dataflow. So a little bit of the agenda, I'll talk about the motivation, uh, some challenges of doing a benchmarking framework, uh, talking about the framework itself, uh, sharing some results that we got so far, and also the next steps of bringing this framework to the next level. Uh, so as part of the motivations, I mentioned that I work with data full templates. Uh, what it means is it's, uh, it's a large open source repository that we have uh, 80 plus production ready pipelines. Uh, what is production ready? So for us, it was having documentation and integration tests, uh, but we often have uh, questioning from customers and users of like uh, how much it will cost me or how it will perform. Uh, so now production ready for us means that we we'll have also load and benchmarking tests. Actually, that we we have put those templates uh, to prove with a lot of data. Uh, some of the challenges, uh, I touched a little bit upon it. Uh, running benchmark and load tests is actually really time consuming and resource intensive. So we have to, for some tests, we really have to spin up a lot of resources um, and different uh, large machines to really see how it goes. Uh, it is hard to create a realistic and producible environments. So hard to make sure that like, if you do separate tests that you're dealing with the same kind of data, the same shape, uh, there are a lot of different combinations to experiment. So we have, if you're running Dataflow, we have a bunch of service flags. Uh, a couple of topics that were touched here, like you can configure the memory per vCPU worker type. Uh, we have different scenarios when you're running load tests. So we might have uh, tests with a backlog. So you have a lot of data in your queue before you start a job, or you also want to see how it performs in a steady state. Those can have really different behaviors. Uh, when you talk about the, the processing, and also how it can perform using different batch sizes. I think we have seen a lot of talks that mentioned that uh, doing batching can be uh, useful, can improve a lot of performance, but like by how much and what's the, actually the, the limit for that. Uh, and last but not least, uh, how to compare those metrics. Uh, I'll cover a little bit more when, when we talk about results. Uh, so, those are the topics that we'll talk about. Those comprise the benchmarking framework. Like we have resource managers, data generators, metrics collection, and base classes. Uh, so resource managers are a way to provision and tear down resources as needed. So um, usually what we had in Beam was like a bunch of Kubernetes spec files that you can pre-create, uh, but that's not usually uh, not always match the stack that you have in your test. So data flow templates is actually in Java, so we want to manage everything that we uh, want to test in Java. So we created a bunch of resource managers. Uh, I cope with here, like BigQuery, Spanner, Kafka, Elasticsearch, uh, and a bunch of others that are already uh, ready to use. Uh, we use this guy called test containers, that if you have any container that you can spin up uh, for testing, uh, you can wrap up uh, using the using the framework, uh, so it really makes it easy to to bring those resources up and use them for for testing. Uh, also, I have listed a few databases here, but uh, we also have a, like a JDBC resource manager. So whenever you have a driver for a database, you can just you can just use it uh, for any database. Uh, resource managers. Uh, so this, if you are familiar with, this is a JUnit uh, test. Uh, basically, we have uh, add before annotation, and then we set up resource manager. So we just tell, like, we use the PubSub, maybe BigQuery resource manager, 
uh, for this current test, and it, uh, before it runs the test, it will set up all those resources and have everything ready. Uh, in the actual test, you just say like, this resource manager, I want you to create a topic, or I want you to create a subscription, or I want you to get that uh, BigQuery table ready for testing. And it will provision everything when the tests uh, run in. And after that, we just have to use this resource manager to use to tear down and clean up all the resources. Uh, you don't want to create uh, research, resources that we use for testing and, and leave them there. Question? Does it automatically, is it, is it, is it safe to run multiple of these at the same time? Uh, is it actually like appending a unique suffix or prefix to the, to the topic names if you don't want to? Right, so the question is if it's, this is safe to run uh, in parallel with many tests if there's no collision. Right, so yeah, it's not part of the scope here, but this PubSub resource manager is part of the, a member of the class, not static or anything. So those frameworks, uh, JUnit at least, or Surefire, Failsafe, they create uh, all, like one instance of that class uh, for each test, so you can parallelize them. Uh, and like this test name, uh, this part of the base class that I'll mention uh, generates uh, random ID every every time, like it has a timestamp, so it should be safe to, to run. Uh, so, and then tear down, make sure that we don't leave anything, we don't leak uh, any kind of test resource. Uh, talk about data generator, uh, We you can generate data as needed for both uh, backlog or steady state tests. Uh, you can, use some pre-existing templates that we have, but we also have the integration of this framework, uh, JSON data generator, that you can have this kind of JSON here that has some function calls to make sure that you can generate uh, a lot of data uh, using this, this format uh, and for testing. So you might have your own data set, your own format that you want to test. Of course, they don't want you to put a customer data or anything into a test. So you can generate the same format to have really realistic uh, data sets. This framework's really cool, so recommend trying it. Uh, so we have, we also have a template that will allow you to run those tests. So we allow you to generate data uh, to those things. So BigQuery, GCS, PubSub, JDBC, or Spanner. Uh, it's like it's really e easy to use. So. In your test, you can just use this data generator, uh, tell how many QPS you want, how many elements per second, uh, the number of messages that you want to produce, uh, and what's actually the, I think I mentioned that, here's mentioned that the default PubSub, so it's not uh, set in here, but like what's the topic that you save, uh, and what's the number of workers, the maximum number of workers that you want to uh, use for that production, because uh, it also spans up, uh, data flow job to produce the data. So it's really realistic environment. And here in this case, it's using the schema template game event, which I mentioned uh, here. Uh, we also have like, if you don't want to call this programmatically, we also have, if you go to data flow, like create job from template, there's a template called streaming data generator that you can use just for this purpose to generate a lot of data for, uh, for testing. Uh, some of the metrics that I mentioned, uh, so a few things that we collect from the job. Of course, we want to see things like time, how long the job takes to start from start to finish. Uh, we have an estimation of cost, like we collect the specific metrics that are built by uh, Google Cloud and have, the, and have the cost, like we just generate a number based on the metrics that we can collect. Uh, the CPU utilization, so we get both the average and maximum CPU utilization. I think we mentioned here in a few talks that like you can use that to estimate if your worker is uh, overutilized or underutilized, so that's a good metric to expose. And also the input and output throughput. Uh, basically in your test you can specify what's the transform that you want to measure uh, the throughput. So usually input throughput would be very early in the pipeline and output would be close to your sink, close to the destination. Uh, so you, you can also, uh, it can get complicated if you have a bunch of joins, uh, but I think usually you can express something as part of your input or output of the, of the pipeline. 
Uh, base classes. So the idea of base classes is to remove most boilerplate from the code and focus on the actual tasks. I mentioned the parts and here's how we bring them, bring them together. So we have the data generator uh, to actually generate data. We run the pipeline uh, code. So here it's like we're calling a template, passing a few properties. Uh, you assert correctness, so you make sure that some uh, results are there, that the job finish uh, with success. You can also see if actual things got data, and anything in the framework also helps with that. We have a bunch of assertions. Right? And at the end, you export the metrics. Uh, I mentioned metrics uh, before, but uh, we are, you have this method here, get metrics, that collects all the information that I mentioned before. But the way that we are comparing is exporting to BigQuery, so we can plot uh, in, in a few charts and actually uh, have a visual of the, the performance of this. Any questions so far? Okay, some, some results. Uh, so here's an example of an output that we got from a specific test. So we have those templates like PubSub to BigQuery, PubSub subscription to BigQuery, PubSub to GCS text and also PubSub to PubSub. There are a few use cases for that. And like two different tests, one using steady state and another one steady state using streaming engine. So we can compare like the dollar cost uh, side by side. Uh, really uh, shows that streaming engine has advantages uh, in terms of cost. Uh, it's way more price effective when you can when you're reading from, from PubSub. Uh, it, streaming Engine ships a lot of the uh, IO, like the reading from PubSub to the service side, so your workers are free to actually work on uh, your pipeline and not actually doing the just the IO uh, part. Uh, also some examples like the maximum throughput uh, we can see the streaming engine uh, gets over in all scenarios. The same for output. You can really blow up the park there. Uh, a side-by-side -side comparison of some templates. So here's to process like 10 gigabytes of data. And we have a few, uh, there's a huge variance. So we can see that like, I think mostly the batch jobs are pretty low. You already have like, 10 gigabytes, so you just process that, you have everything ready, and then when you have to stream that, uh, the, you get this, this higher price here, but you can see like to process 10 gigabytes, I don't think any template gets costs over a dollar to run, so it's, uh, those are pretty nice choices if you have to bring your workloads, like you don't need to write any beam code, you just uh, select one from the data flow UI. So it's a, a really nice way of bringing workloads and getting started with uh, data flow. Uh, the same runtime. So for the same 10 gigabytes of data, like how long it takes. Uh, I think that's a similar scenario, like the batch jobs are fast, are run around seven minutes and streaming uh, 10 plus minutes. Uh, some of the next steps. Uh, the framework is currently uh, at a folder called IG in this repository, which is a flow template repository. Uh, there is also a step-by-step -step tutorial that Pranav made available if you want to try it end-to-end. Uh, -end. It's really helpful to, um, to go through that. Uh, it started with uh, being a low-test framework for templates, but we also have uh, some tests specific for IOs now to really test just like a specific source, specific sync. Uh, and then the Beam team is really helping uh, creating some of those tests. Or just like if you need a transform, you can use it. Uh, it's pretty generic. Uh, and there's some work in progress to move the framework from the Dataflow templates repository to Apache Beam. So there's a pull request uh, that's currently uh, going through some iterations on trying to make the code a little bit more to beam standards, but uh, I think that's going to happen uh, quite soon. Uh, that's it. Any questions?